loves, what's up, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a new pick a card reading and this one is all about a message from your future self. I am so excited about it. We're gonna try to get as much detail as possible in today's reading for you. I cannot wait. I love this topic, so I'm just really stoked about it. If you are new to pick a card readings, I'm gonna give you a quick little rundown of how they work. So over here we have a group number one, two, three, and four. So you can take a moment, pause the video if you'd like to find the pile that you are the most drawn towards. Then once you're done choosing your pile, you can then scroll down to the comment box or the description box to find the timestamp that is linked to your specific card. And then you can skip ahead and watch your personal reading all about your message from your future self. If you like to choose with crystals, we also have some crystals on these cards. So over here on group one, we have this beautiful tangerine quartz. And then over here on group number two, we have this beautiful selenite wand. So this is for group two. Then over on group three, we have this gorgeous piece of rose quartz, which is actually my favorite rose quartz. I love this piece, it's so gorgeous, so unique. Um, and then over here on group four, we have this super seven crystal. Um, this is basically seven different crystals in one, seven different minerals. It's sort of similar to amethyst, um, but it has seven different minerals in it, so. That is what we have for our group options. Again, take a moment, pause the video if you'd like to find the pile that you are the most drawn towards. Then once you're done choosing your pile, there's gonna be timestamps linked down below so that you can skip ahead to your personal reading. So with that being said, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right into today's video. All right, so group number one, if you chose this pile, then this is gonna be your reading all about your message. So let's hop right into it. All right, so group one, we actually have a clear a very clear message coming through. Um, we have the Moon Child card, the Seven of Wands, uh, Page of Pentacles, the Ten of Cups, and then Divine Wisdom. It's really interesting that we start off with a card that's not in the regular tarot. It's just kind of like a exclusive card for this particular deck. And then we also end with another one of those exclusive cards that's not in regular tarot. Like the Moon Child card and Divine Wisdom are not in regular tarot decks it's just yeah it's just like what the author put in these cards and you have both of them and there's only two of them in the deck and you have both so this is really interesting they have a very special meaning to them so there's just a very interesting message in this pile and i'm really excited about it um so first off what i'm seeing is you're going through like an activation right now and your future self wants you to know that what you're going through right now if you're going through like a confusing time or you're unsure about some stuff or if there's like i don't know whatever it is that you're going through right now your future self wants you to know that this isn't and like actually an activation it's a really good time and your future self wants you to know that this is a very positive pivotal time in your life and even if it feels like you're kind of like fending off certain thoughts and you're like no let's discard that or if you're fending off certain opinions of other people and maybe you're wanting to go in a particular direction or do something but you're kind of scared of judgment or you have people that are like either opposing you or things like that um or if you're like you know you have these thoughts or there's, there's these opportunities coming up that maybe we don't feel quite ready for right now so we're just like pushing stuff off somehow you're going through a phase in your life where you might be pushing something off like an idea a project an opportunity but your higher self is like okay you know what resonates in your heart you know what you're excited about and you need to go in that direction you need to do it because the page of pentacles symbolizes that there's something that has caught our attention. This could be like an opportunity, a project, an idea that we have, a career shift, going back to school for something, learning something new, getting a new job, going in a completely different direction, like buying a home somewhere completely different. You know, it's something that it's an idea right now because the pages talk about an idea that we haven't yet taken action on, but it's kind of just like brewing there and maybe we've been thinking about it. The Seven of Wands indicates that we might be sort of like pushing this energy off or maybe we have in the past and we're just like oh yeah 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 like maybe um but at the same time we kind of almost view it as maybe wishful thinking or maybe there's other people that maybe disapprove of this kind of new idea or they just feel like maybe they don't necessarily disapprove but they just have their own opinions on it you know your higher self is really wanting you to go in this direction. Or maybe it even feels like you just have so much going on right now that you're like, I don't know how to, to do that. Your higher self is like, 
oh my goodness, this direction is very positive and we should totally go in it because, or yeah, I mean, your future self is the self coming through that has taken this opportunity, right? Because we have all different directions we can go in. We have free will. You know, you don't just have one future self. You have a future self that's like, you know, doing something that they really like. We have future selves that made a different choice. The future self that's coming through for you right now is the one that took this opportunity and started doing whatever this is and went for it. And they're like, oh yes, 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 yes. I would do that a hundred times over again. They're saying that this is, this is something that can turn out to be very successful for you if you go for it and if you put in the willpower, the determination and the, the routine and you really just stick to it. But you realize that this opportunity this thing, this opportunity, it's going to take some work. It's going to take some effort. The page of pentacles aren't just like quick and easy. They realize that this undertaking is definitely going to take my time. It's going to take my energy, but you know, if we're really inspired by it, then it's a good thing. Right. And, um, you know, it's going to come with its obstacles, its challenges, but if you continue to pursue this regardless of the challenges and the obstacles, regardless of, you know, having to learn new things because the page of pentacles is kind of associated with also possibly having to like learn a new skill, um, in order to really go in this direction, you know, we might have to like work on perfecting something, you know, maybe we've, we're already decently good at something, but we realize that in order to be a master at this, it's going to take some work. It's going to take some time to really build this up. Your future self is like, holy dang, is it ever going to be worth it? And like I said, the future self that's coming through is the one that did it and went for it and continued through even through the hard times. And it turned out to be the 10 of cups, which is one of the best cards in tarot, you guys. It is one of the best cards in tarot. And like, look at how happy these two people are right here. They are having a blast. The, uh, 10 cups at the top are supposed to symbolize like a rainbow and it's basically showing like even through all of the rain, the rain ended up being something very positive. So even though we had to go through hardship and endure rain and not sunshine the whole way, the rain ended up watering our garden and making our land and our pursuits and our desires way more abundant than they would have ever been without the rain. So what your higher self wants you to know is it is going to be so worth the challenge, the effort, the obstacles, because the challenge, effort, and obstacles are actually going to make you more abundant in the end. So they really want you to go in this direction, but you cannot give up because if you go in this direction, you reach challenge and then you give up, you're not going to get there, right? Obviously. So your higher self is coming through and they're like, just do it. it. It It's going to be so worth it. Like the 10 of cups is when we feel abundant in money, relationships, love, career, emotion. Like the 10 of cups represents emotional fulfillment in all aspects because it's the last like numbered card because then it all of a sudden goes into the court cards. If you know tarot, you might not understand what I'm saying right now, but basically the, the 10 is like the completion card. It's when we reach our goal. And the cups represent our emotions. So this is our full emotional fulfillment in all aspects. It's like, we freaking made it. We did it. I am so emotionally fulfilled. The river down here, it symbolizes our emotions are just in a full flow. They're flowing. They were unstoppable. We feel so great. We feel in alignment. Our head and our heart are fully aligned. We feel like we've reached the right place and we've learned so much along the way. We've been able to grasp our talents. We've been able to really, you know, perfect them and work on them. Um, you know, and we might be like focused on details too, because pentacles are all about the details and, and really wanting to make things perfect. And even though it might not be perfect in the beginning, you're working on that mastery throughout this process and you will get there. Okay. And the more effort and love that you put into it, the faster and easier it will be because, you know, when we wake up out of the wrong side of the bed and we have to do our tasks with a negative mindset, we're going through our day and we're just like, oh, I know I have to do this. I know I have to do this, but I freaking don't want to. Ugh. Of course, it's going to be really challenging and really hard to do it. And we all have days like that. Like it's totally fine, but your higher self is coming through and it's like, it'll be worth it to get through that. But they're also giving you the advice to come from a place of love for your craft, love for whatever it is that you're doing, love for whatever it is that you are pursuing, because where you're going, 
yes, there's going to be obstacles and challenges, but if we continue to just remember why we chose this and why we've gone down this path and what called us to it in the first place, we are going to reach so much success and so much fulfillment, group number one, like so much fulfillment. Ah, I can't even believe it. It's also interesting. You guys chose the tangerine uh, quartz because this is connected to our sacral chakra. Um, and, and a little bit of our solar plexus. It's kind of like a little bit of mix of both, right? And um, this talks about our expression of our creativity. It is creative energy where we end up creating worlds because the sacral chakra is connected to the reproductive system, which is our cre creation system. That is how we create life. And so right now it's kind of like you are creating your life and you are possibly putting your energy into something else to make a, a new physical thing, whether that be a home, a career, a, a craft, or whatever it is that you are thinking about pursuing. You are like bringing that to life essentially, right? So this is talking about your creativity and that that sort of energy. So it's no wonder you're drawn to tangerine quartz because that's, that's the pile that you chose. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like really bringing that out. And as we can see in this card, it's all that like tangerine color, right? So it's like you're literally bringing something to life and it's <laughs> it's amazing we also have this divine wisdom card which to me connects to like ancient egypt i mean all these cards kind of like have an egyptian vibe to them but this divine wisdom just kind of reminds me of um like this also reminds me of a little bit of india and egypt which is really interesting but it's kind of like you are really honing in on your craft and you are learning so much along the way and it's going to be so worth it because when we go through challenges and we figure out how to overcome them, you know, when we're working on our craft and, and we have certain things that maybe we don't like about what it is that we were doing and we're trying to be per perfectionists over it, we're really just learning how to uh, define our skill more. We're focusing on the details and we're like, you know, let's improve here, let's improve here. Of course, we have to like, you know, continue to just accept where we are as well we can't just like work on one piece for our whole life and then finally release it to the public and be like okay yeah, i've been working on this my whole life and i finally like mastered it you know we got to like give ourselves a little bit of a break and like put things out but we we get better and better over time that's the thing we get better and better over time and you're doing something right now working on something where this is going to grow and get better and better over time this is something where you can be extremely successful at it and you're your future self is coming through, the one that has found that success, and they're like, yo, just to let you know, you can also get here, so like, please go down this path, because I don't regret it, and it was so worth it, like, I keep hearing the words, worth it, worth it, worth it, worth it, no matter what sort of, like, you know, opinions you have to fend off, no matter what sort of, like, criticisms that you get at first, because, I mean, when we first start something, not all of us are very good at it, we might get certain criticisms, criticisms of people being like, pfft, don't even have a skill in that. Don't even pursue that. Like, for example, if we're trying to like be artists or something, we do a painting and it like sucks at first. Of course our first painting is going to suck. I don't know one person who was like born out of the womb and then they paint and then it's just like, bam, amazing. You know, we all like, some of us are more prone to being, to learning things faster. Like some of us might be better at learning art quicker, but none of us are born with just like an innate ability to like do something amazing. Um, we all start off, you know, drawing those stick figures, <laughs> you know, so even if you're not where you would like to be right now, you're at your starting point and that's fine. Your higher self is coming through like, it's worth it. Just keep going for it. Just keep going for it. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. But you really have to put your heart and soul into it and, and commit because the pentacles are, are all about commitment to something, even through the mundane times, even through the hard times. And I know I'm getting a little bit repetitive right now, but your higher self has come through. They're just like, please just like nail this in so that you understand what the possibilities are for you. So your higher self really wants you to go for it, really wants you to take this opportunity. And again, you are going to become kind of like a master at whatever this is. Like you have this potential to become a master and the pages talk about you have all this potential, but it's up to you if you are willing to realize it. And realize means that you're actually going for it and doing it until it actually becomes a thing, until it actually becomes physical reality, until it becomes your reality, um, even through the more difficult times so 
with that being said we have some more cards to add on to this reading sorry i keep like knocking into my camera stand but anyway um let's get into some of these cards which ones i want to start out with these ones so we ooh reclaim reclaim your power don't let people tell you what you can and cannot do right also reclaim your abilities because the, i'm getting that whatever it is that you've been thinking of this is something that's connected to your past life and it's almost like you're reclaiming it relearning it or going back to something that you've done in a past life so i don't think it's going to take you that long to like find your footing in this new endeavor because i think you've already like gone down a bit of this road in a past life that's why you're kind of drawn to it in this life your soul wants to keep doing it in this life. Um, we also have the card of the creator. Look at that. You are literally the divine creator of your own reality. I say that all the time in my videos. We have the creator card, which talks about you have this creative ability to do this. Reclaim your power. Realize that you have that ability to do that. The world can't stop you. The universe cannot stop you. There's opportunities around every corner. And if we hone in on our skills and we believe in ourselves and we keep going for it, we will reach those opportunities. We will find those opportunities. You know, it's not that rare to like become something or do something. It's really, it's not. Those opportunities exist everywhere. And if we believe in ourselves and we focus on our skills, we will get there, but we can't give up, right? Because giving up is when we actually fail. That's the only time that failure ever exists is when we give up. So, yeah, and then we also have, ooh, patience. Yes, so this kind of makes sense because um, it's kind of like the Page of Pentacles that I was talking about. It's not necessarily going to be the easiest road of all time, but it's going to be way worth it because you're going to actually get to that goal, that end goal. And also, slow and steady wins the race. So don't try to look for overnight success. Page of Pentacles is not overnight success. And your higher self is coming through, your future self, saying like, hey, this isn't going to be overnight success, but I promise you it's worth it to keep pursuing it because the end result, you will get there. You will be successful in this. The Ten of Cups promises that. Um, and it's going to shape you into who you need to be. So slow and steady wins the race. You know the story about the tortoise and the hare? That is exactly why we have the tortoise shell on this card. Slow and steady wins the race. So don't try to get overnight success because... When we reach success before we're necessarily ready or if we don't have to work for it as hard, a lot of times that success is not something that's going to last or offer us great result. It's kind of like trying to do a painting in one day. It's not going to be as impactful or as detailed as if you took six months to do a grand painting. You know what I mean? Like there's no way that a painting done in one day could be close to the result of like Leonardo da Vinci taking six months on a painting you know what I mean like if Leonardo da Vinci did one painting in one day we'd probably be like well that's not that impressive <laughs> it'd, it'd probably still be impressive he's a great artist or was a great artist but like it'd probably still be impressive but it would be nothing like if we took six months to do it so don't rush it don't rush your craft don't rush your result don't rush your success because the tortoise that takes their time and has patience with themselves they're not trying to rush it like of course go for it and don't be lazy this isn't an excuse to like sit around and be lazy we need to really work for it and go for it we need to put that effort into that painting right i'm using painting as an example here but like we need to put that effort in because that's what what is going to make us a master that is what's going to make us focus on this detail and perfect our craft or whatever it is that we're doing you know maybe you're even just moving or whatever slow and steady wins the race if we build a house in one day not gonna be very good if we take a whole six months a whole year to build a house it's gonna be really nice <laughs> so have patience have patience because that is gonna be the key here to um your success the next two cards let it go okay so this I think is like, don't be too hard on yourself. And also this is letting go of old ties too. You see how these two birds are tied together? If we're tied to something that's still holding us back, we need to like come to terms with being able to release old things in order to free ourselves, free our schedule, free our time. Um, we also need to maybe let go of our limiting beliefs, our doubts on ourselves, right? We need to open up our hearts some more. Um, hummingbirds are all about drinking the nectar of life. So maybe we need to 
like let go of any resistance that we're not worthy of, of drinking the nectar of life. You are so worthy of that. You came here to do that. That's why your soul's on this earth, to realize that. The reason why you even have passions is because your soul came here to realize those. That's why we have interests and passions, and that's why they're usually different from certain people. You know what I mean? We don't all have the same passions. Some of them might be slightly similar, you know, but that's because we belong in that, you know, sort of group because our, our, we have that collective soul that's interested in that sort of same sort of thing, but there's enough to go around for us. There's more than enough to go around. Not everybody wants to be a singer. Not everybody wants to be a painter. Not everybody wants to be a chef. Not everybody wants to be a writer. You know, we all have enough to go around. Let go of not thinking that you're worthy. You are. Your soul came here with desires because that's what your soul came here to experience. So let's go for it. Okay. Then we also have tender embrace. Ooh, this is like connections. And we also have these two hummingbirds that are, that are connected. Um, I think this is you embracing yourself and letting go of old beliefs that you've had on yourself. So I mostly see this in this way, but this could also mean that you are making a really close relationship along your journey. That's going to be very powerful and impactful. Maybe some of you already know this person or and are getting closer with them or this could be like a new person that you are meeting along this journey that's going to be very significant and offer even more like emotional fulfillment um along your journey is just like a very supportive person we also have the 22 the angel number 22 um which also signifies connection and meeting the right people um so yeah there's a lot of like emotional fulfillment here in every single aspect, within love, within career, within all sorts of things. This is beautiful. <laughs> so with that being said, our next card, ooh, look at, we have, look at this. We have this sea turtle card and we have the patience with the tortoise, tortoise shell. We have two sort of like turtle uh, cards here. And this one says conservation, make conscious choices. Don't fall back into like old habit, old routine, because that's going to stop you from reaching this new idea, this new goal. If we fall back into the same habits and same routines, we have to, we have to redefine who we are and what it is that we spend our time doing. Because if we're constantly spending our time doing it again, like, you know, our old routine, of course, our old routine didn't take us towards our dreams because we didn't, we didn't add them in. So we're gonna need to change up how we define ourselves how we view ourselves, our identity. We have to start seeing ourselves as the person that has whatever this thing is and is this thing. So, you know, if you did, if you never made time for your craft, like writing, of course, you're not really going to be a writer or ever become a writer. You need to start seeing yourself as who you want to be and start owning that. That is what's going to bring you there. Make conscious choices every day when you wake up. Be like, okay, you know what? I'm going to start making time for this new path so that I can actually steer myself in that direction more and more. Okay. Then the next few cards that we have here, we have ghost lands. There's something you're going to be needing to leave behind and let go of. Ghost lands is leaving behind something. It is time to ghost your old life <laughs> to where it's not even recognizable anymore. Your, this card also coming through is a message from your future self that your life right now is going to be unrecognizable from your future life if you go in this direction in the best way possible because you are going to be so fulfilled and you're, go, again, going through that activation right now. We have that moon child card to start us off. So you've been feeling like this activation has been coming in lately. You've been feeling like there's your gut and your heart have been pulling you in a direction or ideas have been coming to you lately. It's kind of like someone's almost whispering ideas into your head. That's coming from your future self, your higher self. That's like, yes, go in this direction. This is where you need to go next. These are our new passions. These are our new desires. So you might have different activations within you that maybe make you drawn to certain things. Maybe you're now drawn to like a new something or a new place or a new career or a new talent or skill. It's because you're meant to follow that. And again, your life right now, completely unrecognizable from your future life if you go in this direction. Again, in the best way possible. Ooh, we also have magical map shifter. So this makes total sense for you because you're literally shifting your entire life right now. And that's why it's becoming unrecognizable to your past. 
you're literally shifting your entire destiny right now. That's why we have moon child here. You are activating your soul's purpose right now, group number one. Your soul's purpose is being activated. You might notice that you're no longer interested in the old stuff that you were interested in. Your entire self and your soul is shifting. You're going through a massive, massive shift. And again, your higher self is like, it might feel confusing right now. It might also feel kind of like, maybe even like shitty or confusing at times. But your future self looks upon this point of their life and they're like, oh, thank God that happened. I'm so thankful for that. It's shifting the best way possible. You might notice that certain things are ending in your life right now. And it's because your soul is making room. Your higher self is making room for this new direction because you're about to fulfill your soul's entire destiny. And it's going to be way better than you could imagine. There's going to be beautiful love here. There's going to be like fulfillment in every aspect. Okay. Also, my camera's about to die. I'm going to just restart. Not die. It's about to run out of uh, time. It only records for half an hour. So I'm just going to restart it really quick. All right, we're back. Um, we also have the card here of making a choice. Oh, yes, this one is so fitting for you. It's like we have two different directions we can go in. Do we want to? Do we want to continue on the same path and go into the same old, same old? This the reality that we are already familiar with. Do we just want to continue that on, or do we want to enter the magical land where magic is happening? Where the magical shapeshifter energy is coming in. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> we have two different, you know, this is actually really funny because this actually is a whole storyline. We, we can make a choice. We're walking down a path and either our outcome is like what we've already been familiar with, it's not, nothing changing, or we're gonna go down the magical path of like whew, magical shapeshift and like amazingness where literal magic can happen you're literally at that pivotal point of your life where you get to make a choice. And again, your future self's coming through. And this is the future self that chose the magical direction, the brand new magical direction. And he, pff, that future self does not regret that choice because they're coming through right now to be like, hey, I tried it. I went through, <laughs> I took the red pill or whatever it is and went down the new path and hell yeah, glad I did. <laughs> so... Lots of amazing energy here. Group number one. We're going to shuffle just a couple more cards on here. So bear with me while we just maybe get any last info on this reading. Also, I'm really loving the colors that are going on here right now. Like, I don't know. This just looks like our chakras are being activated and we're literally walking down like a magical, like, I don't know. It's like we're literally going to Hogwarts all of a sudden. Like, I don't know. Just magic is coming out. So that's what it feels like. That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> so go down this path, group one. Oh. Okay, let's see. Any last information for group one? Let's see. Any last info for group number one? Ooh, let's see what fell down there. Um, hold your vision. Oh my gosh. It's the card that says hold your vision. Let me go grab that just so I can show it to you. It fell on the floor. I literally always have cards falling on the floor when I do readings over here. Um, let's see. I'm literally trying to grab this with my foot right now. <laughs> okay. We have the fixed moon of hold your vision. Look at that. Don't lose sight of your vision. It is taking you where you need to go right now. My goodness. <laughs> Let's get one more card from this deck. Oh, you know, I'm really feeling this one. Time to breathe out, disseminating moon. Let the old stuff go. Time to breathe out. It's time to just like let your worries subside. Breathe out like all of the like tension, worries, or old obligations and things like that, or like all the stuff that might be holding you back, maybe fear of what people might think or say, or like opinions or your own fears. Just like breathe it out. Let the anxiety go. Hold your vision because ooh. Oh, the energy there is juicy, very juicy. So we try to get one card from this deck right here. Juicy, juicy, juicy. Oh, mending. So yeah, you're literally sewing like a new path. I don't see this as like mending something old. I see this as like 
even though mending is usually associated with like fixing something, um, I'm oddly seeing this as you like sowing your new fate, your new destiny, your new path. You might also be mending like old parts of yourself that were like wounded that are that are stuck in fear and things like that, and you might be like healing them um, and fixing them. Okay, so we're gonna get one last card from this deck just because I really want to use this deck. It's one of my favorites. So let's see the last card. <sighs> Fertility. This one talks about um, like having a very, it doesn't mean necessarily fertility in, in terms of reproduction, which is also funny because I was talking about reproduction earlier because of the sacral chakra that is associated with the tangerine. Um, and uh, that's interesting. It's kind of like, again, the creativity of life. So basically this one also has that same sort of message. Also, I have like a bunch of uh, Palo Santo dust coming on my counter right now. <laughs> you can't see it in the camera, but there's a bunch of Palo Santo dust. Anyway, um, the fertility is again connected to that really high creative energy. It's a very fertile time for us right now where we have a heightened ability of creative energy. It is also connected to like physical fertility as well, but also in the sense of, um, yeah, like being really connected to our creative energy and the ability to kind of create worlds right now. So whoo, group number one, amazing reading. <laughs> I love this reading. I hope you did too. I hope it inspired you, resonated with you. Your future self came through very strong and I loved it, loved these messages. So that is what we have for you. Again, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see more videos like this in the future. I'm sending you all my love. Hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss any videos if you would like to be a part of future ones because I'd love to have you there. And hopefully I see you in my next one. Bye. All right, so group number two, if you chose this beautiful pile, <laughs> wait, close. If you chose this beautiful pile with this selenite wand, and then this is going to be your reading. So let's see, there we go. <laughs> so without further ado, let's hop right into it. All right, group number two, this is gonna be your reading. So we start off with the card Shadow Work, Six of Pentacles, Ace of Wands, the Three of Swords, and then the High Priestess right here. Um, the Shadow Work card is interesting because it's not in like regular tarot. It's kind of like an exclusive card um, just for this deck, which we actually had exclusive cards, interestingly enough, in group number one. And I feel like they're pretty rare um, just because there's not a lot of them in this deck and we just seem to like be getting all of them. Um, so yeah, we have the Shadow Work card, the Six of Pentacles, Ace of Wands, the Three of Swords, and then the High Priestess. So there's a lot going on this reading and my first impression was that there's a new you that is completely sprouting up a much more confident version of you and a version of you that is realizing your worth and a message from your future self. Your future self wants you so badly to know right now, group number two, that you are worth so much more than what you are currently allowing yourself to have and what you're currently allowing in your life. You are worth so much more than that. And there could even be like certain aspects of yourself, like maybe, maybe we've been really hard on ourselves lately and your higher, your future self, your higher self is coming through and is like, don't be that way. You don't deserve that. And you could instead be your own light. And it's actually really interesting that I say that actually I just got goosebumps because I just made tea right before your group. I wanted like a hot cup of tea of like this crown chakra tea that I have. And they have little messages on the um, things. And I'm just gonna like show you, show you this in this reading because like I want you guys to believe me. Uh, so fresh cup of tea. And for some reason when I sat down to do this reading, I was like, oh, this little message on this cup is gonna be for group number two since I just made this tea right now. And I got like this calling to just make this tea. Um, and the little message, this is from Buddha Teas, by the way. I'm not sponsored by them, but like, freaking amazing company and I love their like chakra teas um and this one says be a lamp unto yourself which is so interesting because I was like somehow that's going to apply to this reading and then I got goosebumps right when I just talked about like being your own light um and like letting your light shine so be a lamp unto yourself is like basically being your own light being your own reason being 
a light to yourself, being exactly what you need for yourself. Instead of being an enemy to yourself, this is being what you need. So whatever it is that you seek, whatever seems like inspiration and magic and light to you, whatever you are drawn to, kind of like a moth to a flame, right? Don't be a moth looking for its flame outside of itself. A message from your future self is to become your own flame. And it's interesting, we have Ace of Wands, which is connected to fire and it's like a little candle flame. And <laughs> your future self wants you to become your own flame, your own lamp, your own light. Don't feel like you need anything outside of you to become a reason for your own worth or for your reason to be. None of that matters. Um, a message from your future self is like, you're about to go through this major transformation, this shadow work. Shadow work is actually um, a very powerful technique at looking at our subconscious mind in order to heal ourselves, in order to birth a new self. And your future self is telling you right now, hey, you're about to go through a huge rebirth right now and the new you is about to come out because maybe we've been going through kind of like a shadow period in our life. And the fact that we start off with shadow work doesn't even surprise me because I feel like you group two have been going through a little bit of a shadow period lately where maybe we've been mentally really hard on ourselves, maybe even mentally lost or confused because whenever we're going through shadow work, we start to take a look at our subconscious mind and we start to kind of observe like and start to realize like, hey, maybe my subconscious isn't, hasn't been my friend lately. Maybe I've been kind of being my enemy and maybe our natural habits is to kind of maybe talk down to ourselves or... You know, maybe we're realizing that we have certain habits that are kind of toxic or like a detriment to, to ourselves rather than us being our light, right? It's like us being a moth that's like drawn to a harsh flame rather than being like a beautiful light that enhances the moth. You know what I mean? It's like, don't, don't burn yourself in the process. So um, instead of being like a flame that hurts, it's time to be a flame that inspires. That's the message here. And basically, we haven't been giving ourselves what we need and that's about to change because you're about to go through a major, major, major transformation. Group two, there's a huge transformation coming, coming towards you. And it's interesting you chose selenite because selenite is actually super connected to light energy um, and it's a supercharger crystal. It enhances and charges the energy of anything that it comes in contact with. And I actually have like a selenite bowl where I put all my crystals in in order to like recharge them and also cleanse them because it's also a cleansing crystal. So it's interesting that you're drawn to that because it's very fitting for this group. And it's also interesting that with the moon here and selenite, it's also connected to the moon. In fact, it's named after the moon. Uh, the moon goddess Selene, that's where selenite gets its name. Anyway, Moon energy is coming in strong for you right now and you're about to do a huge clearing and a huge purging of your old self, this old, it's actually not even like your real self. Your real self is like this ace of wands that wants to like peek through, but for some reason we've been dampening the light because you think about the shadow, we've been stuck in the shadow, we haven't been seeing the light, we've been blocking our light, we've been blocking ourselves and dimming our own light because maybe we felt unworthy, maybe we felt like, we don't deserve something or maybe we've just been super hard on ourselves and any time that our light tried to shine, maybe we were so self-critical that we just dimmed our own light and we're like, why am I being that way? Like, I don't even want to shine my light. We've been so self-critical of ourselves. We've been like almost our own worst enemy, keeping ourselves in this dark sort of cage and any time that we've wanted to like shine our light, we've been maybe super judgmental and like, again, critical and things like that. That is all about to change because you're starting to like, there's this new you that's coming out that's realizing all of these old subconscious programs and you're going to begin releasing them and also begin sort of just giving yourself small little doses of like, yes, you know what? I'm just going to start encouraging myself and it might not be an overnight shift, but there's like this encouragement that's beginning to come out and this rebalancing where we're starting to like all of a sudden let our light begin to shine once again. And we're also realizing that we don't want to just settle for like a small mediocre life. The six of pentacles is showing that you don't want just mediocre energy. You don't want to give others mediocre energy. You, there's a, there's a part of you that realizes like, Hey, I have a lot of energy inside. There's a lot of me that really wants to come out, but we've been caging ourselves and the cage is about to be finally lifted because we're breaking through that. 
Ace of Wands, this is like when we have that flower that somehow freaking makes it through the cement and somehow sprouts through cement and we're, <laughs> have you ever seen that? You're like walking on the street and there's like grass or like a flower that somehow sprouted through like hard cement and you're like, how the hell? That is literally what you're going through right now. And your future self is coming through to be like, hey, this is actually gonna be a beautiful process and there's massive change that's about to come. So just like accept it. Don't be too hard on yourself. Don't be like, oh, why have I been in the shadow stage? Or how, how dare I cage myself? Don't start getting self-critical again. That's the opposite of what we need to do, right? So just allow your light to start shining and it's gonna start shining no matter what because you can't stop it. You can't hold it forever. You're like the cement that's trying to hold down that flower, you're not gonna hold it forever. Eventually, that flower is gonna break through and then there's gonna be more flowers that break through and more and more and more. You cannot hold yourself back forever. That is not what you're meant to do. That's not what's meant to happen. So naturally, within actually, I, be, I feel like the next like one to six months, again, it is a general reading, so that's why I'm giving such a large time frame right now, but one to six months is when you're gonna start to like all of a sudden this new self is really gonna start to sprout, group two. And it is going to be life changing, life altering. You're not gonna be able to hold back no more and it's gonna help you so much. It's gonna help you excel forward. Like this is like a quantum leap that I'm seeing for you because of this like shadow work, because of you recognizing your subconscious mind and all of a sudden giving yourself what you actually need, all of a sudden you're feeding yourself what you really need, six of pentacles, all of a sudden you're actually like, oh wait, I need to water myself, not drought myself. You know, if you're a plant, it's like you've been droughting yourself and like going through a huge drought. All of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, I'm gonna water myself again. I need to start giving myself encouragement rather than discouragement. So then all of a sudden that's gonna happen and pshh, you are gonna be taking off. And this is quantum leap energy because you've been almost like, it's almost like a spring that you're like holding back for so long and you're just, you've been repressing it, repressing it, repressing it, repressing it, and like holding it back, self-criticism, like putting blocks up, putting fronts up, walls up. That's about to like completely break off. And it's actually going to be one of the best, most liberating things that can happen for you. Um, group two and it's going to be finally like we're allowing ourselves to just be ourselves and we're having so much more fun the ace of wands is such an inspiring happy card and it comes with it so much potential so this flower that's sprouting out feed it water it don't get critical over it okay this is a beautiful flower you are a beautiful flower start to enjoy this process of this birthing because the more that you encourage this, the more that you're gonna awaken this potential and actualize this potential, rather than repressing your potential. Because it's been repressed lately, you've been repressing that potential and it's no bueno, it wants to come out. But it, it served its purpose, right? Because now you're about to quantum leap because there's been so much energy held back that it's all of a sudden like a dam that's been like held back and all of a sudden it starts breaking out and then all of a sudden it's just like pew, huge waterfall, huge water gush, you know what I mean? So that's about to happen it is going to cause changes in your life but in the best way possible and at times it might be a little bit bittersweet at times we we might feel like you know repressing that side of ourselves like your heart wants to sing but you've literally been like dampening it you've been like look at that you know what I mean? Like your heart wants to sing, but our thoughts, you know, the swords represent our mind, our mentality, our thoughts, our subconscious um, and stuff like that, our mind. We've been, our, our mind has been clashing with our heart. It's been like, you know, not good <laughs> to it, but that's about to change. You're gonna be breaking free and breaking out of that you are going to be really realizing your potential. We also have the high priestess here. Your spiritual side is coming. You're going through spiritual awakening right now. I would not be surprised if some of you also have a Kundalini awakening experience within the next one to six months and a huge self-activation. It's interesting that the two cards that surround your your group, your pile, is shadow work, which is being in the shadows, and the high priestess, which is like, being in the shadows as well but it's kind of like in a different way all of a sudden we really own ourselves and all of a sudden like both of these cards are incredibly spiritual and in incredibly connected to spirituality and then the ace of wands is also the wands are connected to spirituality if you don't believe me google it because you know <laughs> they are um and so the wands 
they're also this sort of like spiritual awakening, but also awakening of creativity and inspiration and all that. But I'm seeing you going through this like Kundalini spiritual awakening and realizing who you really are and your potential is going to be coming out and it's going to excel you and propel you further than you could have imagined. So don't hold yourself back. Don't start letting your mind clash with your heart again because that's just going to get in the way and then we're going to need a breakthrough again and again and again. Allow this. Your, your future self is coming through saying like, yes, allow this, allow this, do the encouragement. Um, so another aspect of this is all of a sudden you're going to have a way better understanding of yourself and who you are. New inspirations are coming for you because all of a sudden you're going to allow your light to shine. And when you allow your light to shine, there's like a new inspiration growing, a new interest, a new you that's kind of like coming out of this. And this interest is gonna be something that you can really pursue and dive into and it has a lot of potential to serve you and be a large aspect of who you are. Um, so I just wanna read that quote again on this cup. Like, just listen to this one more time. Be a lamp unto yourself, okay? Be your own light. Be your own inspiration. Be your own source of encouragement. Don't seek it elsewhere because we usually don't find it elsewhere for one. Be your own light, shine it so strong and it's going to be, ah, it's gonna be amazing. Um, and then, yeah, the high priestess as well is like, we're taking our, your, I think you're awakening your intuition for one, your intuition's gonna get stronger because you're gonna know yourself so much better. This is also secret wisdom as well. The high priestess is connected to secret, secret wisdom so all of a sudden we're gaining new wisdom that we and new insight that we never knew before and you might also be learning something that you haven't ever discovered before i think that there's like a secret new interest that's like gonna brew for you that you didn't realize that was there maybe didn't realize that you had that it's like a new energy that's sort of a kind of awakening for you it's like an initiation of something and it's very exciting it's like an exciting new kind of like interest that you get to explore um and a new aspect of yourself that you get to explore and own and it's going to be great <laughs> uh high priestess also talks about like not wanting to like reveal some stuff it also talks about a little bit of concealment so i think that you're also working past your concealment um characteristics like maybe you have a tendency to want to be a little bit more secretive a little bit more private um but I think you're also realizing, I think there's going to be something that you're working on actually that you're kind of like keeping private right now, like a new interest that you sort of keep private at first, like this new aspect of you that you're kind of just like, okay, let me like explore that some more before I just like show it off to the world. But I really think that there's going to be a new interest that you're gaining through this awakening and you're going to be working on it and eventually you're going to like show it off to the world. Eventually you're going to be like, okay, I'm ready to like utilize this skill to its full potential <laughs> so yeah there's definitely something new kind of like brewing here because of all this and it's going to be very inspiring for you so with that being said let's go into the next few cards that we have on your reading yes we have tons more cards so the next ones are going to be these we oh we have the magician right here. Also, it's interesting that this magician card has this like uh, spider on it. Spiders talk about creation, weaving a web. You are weaving a new web for yourself, creating something completely new. The, the uh, magi, magi, whatever, uh, is the magician, basically. And this talks about we are awakening our magic, our creative energy of where we can weave anything and make it. It's almost like you, you have 3D printer energy right now. <laughs> such a weird example you have 3d printer energy right now group number two where you can like weave your own web out of anything like the energy that you have right now can create worlds and your future self is like hey utilize this energy it's also interesting we have this moon here and the moon here these are both really sticking out to me these crescent moons um and this is just symbolizing that there's going to be a lot. You might even notice that you're staying up later. Maybe you have a lot of creative energy at night and it's like making you have insomnia. I don't know why that just came through because of the, these moons. Um, yeah, some of you might be experiencing some insomnia. But it's because your like, creative energies are being activated and it's kind of like going through a, a transformation. So it's kind of like your schedule might be a little bit more off lately than usual. Um, 
It's also interesting, we have these two candles and I'm like burning two candles right here, just the same. You can't really see them on the camera because of the angle, but like these two candles that are on this card, I, it's almost like exactly like we have right here. Really interesting. Um, maybe this means like write down intentions because this book right here, like this is reminding me of like writing down intentions of what you want to experience in your life because the, the magical energy, like this is almost you weaving your web. If you write down your intentions, it's almost like you're claiming the web, the web that you're wanting to weave for yourself, the, the things that you want to create in your life. And I don't know why I'm just seeing that being a very powerful uh, thing for you and your future self is coming through like, hey, write down your intentions right now. <laughs> yeah, that's something that's coming through. So um, we also have withdraw. So you might be going through a period where you maybe want to withdraw your energy, be a little bit more alone or recluse lately. Um, it's also interesting because like we just have so many of these cards in that deck, in this deck, like the shadow work and the high priestess both illuminate that sort of aloneness energy. And it's not saying that you like are going to be completely alone or anything, but, um, I think your higher self is, or your future self is coming through telling you to like take a break to withdraw and meditate. I'm hearing like meditate more because it's going to help you kind of like release your old mental blocks to allow this new you to sprout out more. I'm also hearing that you're going to get maybe messages in your dreams and to like write them down, especially if they seem significant or like, or if they were just really memorable. Um, yeah, interesting. All right, and then the next card that we have is the soul work, the worker bee. It is time to put in the work and do the soul work, which is also shadow. It's interesting we have shadow work and soul work because both of those are kind of the same thing. So right now you're kind of like, yeah, you're really working on yourself and your, your future self is coming through being like, hey, put in the work right now. Just go along with the process because this is going to be something that's like so worth it in the end to like do this sort of like soul work that you're kind of being called to do right now and that's going to kind of like naturally be like coming out um, in your life there also could be like an interesting thing that you guys are like drawn towards working on like a new skill or a new interest that you're drawn to like studying or reading or something like that and somehow that's going to like play a part in um you letting your light shine more so yeah and then with that being said, the next two cards that we have, we have the power of purpose. Ooh, right on target. You are realizing, I think, deeper about what your purpose is and who you are and what you're aiming for, realizing what, what it is that you really want to aim for in life. Ooh, and then we also have the card of great and full. This card talks about uh, achievement and fulfillment. So you're filling up your cup in a new way to where you're not depleting your cup, you're not emptying your cup out and, and criticizing yourself and things like that. All of a sudden, it's like you're fulfilling yourself, encouraging yourself, giving yourself what you need, being your own light, filling your own cup, literally filling your own cup. You're gonna realize what it takes to fill your own cup and make yourself satisfied and excited and happy and motivated and inspired. You are realizing all of what that is and what that takes. This is gonna be an amazing time, group number two. Okay, so next card that we have here, we have the otter initiate. Oh, what was I talking about? Initiations. And this card literally says initiations. <sighs> Be open through this transitional time. Yes, what was I saying? This, I mean, this fits in so well with your reading. Be open through this transitional time. You are going through a massive transition of who you've been and awakening a brand new you. You're doing the soul work, you're putting in the work and it's literally allowing you to create this new you to come through. The next few cards, we have the card of education. So look at this book that she's reading again. You are really gonna be learning or studying something new or writing down your intentions, but I really see that you're, there's a new interest that's sparking for you group two. And your future self is like, yes, go for it. Dive deep into this interest because it's going to lead you down a certain path that you're supposed to go down. This crane is also really sticking out to me. And I'm not sure the spiritual significance of cranes. I don't remember. 
because cranes don't come up for me very often, but maybe Google what a crane means because for some reason that's really sticking out to me in this card right now. Oh, and then we also have listening. Yes, so I am hearing meditation. Also, look at this music here. There might be certain music that's gonna come through and really inspire you. Um, possibly lyrics that get stuck in your head that might end up being certain signs for you. We also have moonlight. Ooh, and then we had so many, <laughs> I was talking about so many different moons in here. Moonlight uh, talks about stepping into the unknown and facing, look at facing the, the storm because there's a, like, a little hurricane going on over there. So this is taking a backseat to kind of observe your emotions, observe what you're going through in order to allow you to let it go and start to recreate a new pattern or a new habit of talking to yourself. So start off with little breadcrumbs. Every time you notice yourself kind of like working up a bit of a storm or like certain feelings are coming up, maybe start to, to see where are they stemming from because that's gonna be the solution to your problem, the eye of the storm. That's gonna be the solution to your problem is focusing on where is this stemming from? How can I focus on healing that? And then also how can I give myself little breadcrumbs of encouragement so I can start to steer myself and my habitual thinking patterns into a new direction. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get some more cards on this group. So I'm gonna restart my camera really quick just so it doesn't cut out on us. Okay, cool. We are back. So let's get some more info. So group two, what other info do we have for group two? There was a card I was really feeling here. I think it was this one. A time for healing, yes. <laughs> oh yes, I mean, that makes total sense. The shadow work, the healing. And then what do you need to release? I mean, both of these cards again, so fitting. So maybe start to ask yourself, what is it that I want to stop doing? What is it that I wanna release? Is it like negative thinking patterns that I wanna release? Um, how do I wanna heal myself? What is the me that I want to be? Let's start to affirm our new self, right? So maybe even grab like a notebook after this or like write down in your phone what it is that you want to be. How do you want to feel? How do you want to talk to yourself? What are some words of encouragement that you can write down so that you can start to practice those? Because that's going to be massively healing for you and it's gonna end a certain cycle. The balsamic moon happens right before a new moon. Um, and yeah, basically it's like, uh, like right before a new moon or sometimes like right after. And that means that we're like going through a phase of like renewal. So, yeah, <laughs> basically you're going through a massive phase of renewal. Massive phase. Yeah, this is happening. Uh, balsamic moon is right before the new moon. So this is like the completion of an old cycle where we shed the old so we can step into the new, which kind of makes all the sense because you had that ace of wands and the releasing of the old and all that kind of stuff with the shadow work card. So you're releasing the old and getting prepared for like a brand new sort of beginning. Let's see what else we get here for group two. What else does the future self of group two have to say? Chop wood, it's time for us to put in the work. So that's just another uh, affirmation of putting in the work and the effort. And then we have why, so why? Ooh, you know, I actually, I've had this deck. Can I just say I've had this deck for like four years. In all of my four years of having this deck, I have never in my life had this card come out in a reading. <laughs> that is crazy. I didn't even know this card existed in this deck. That is really interesting. Um, basically, we're putting in the work and we might need to ask ourselves like, Okay, why do I want what I want? So that you have more of a reason. When we, when we make a reason for why we wanna go in this direction, we actually solidify that path for us instead of just kind of being like, oh, this is what I want, it's because I want it. Why do you want it? What is it gonna bring to you? Because when we do that, when we ask why, that's kind of like the shadow work, or we ask, why am I feeling this way? That's what shadow work is. When we, when we ask ourselves why, where are these 
feelings really stemming from? Where are they really stemming from? So for example, if we're getting triggered by something, if something's bothering us, where is it actually stemming from? Is it stemming from an insecurity because of something we've experienced way in the past? But go deep in it. It might not be the first answer that you get right away. Go deep in it. Really ask yourself like, why does this really bother me? Why? beyond the surface level reason beyond that go deep into it that's like the shadow work stuff right so definitely some shadow work energy coming through for you group number two about getting deep with yourself because once we get deep with ourselves and we realize the why a lot of the times it fixes the entire problem because we realize oh that's where that was stemming from and, and within that realization we're so easily able to let it go because we're like oh I, I understand now like it's it, it's within the understanding of ourselves that we're able to heal and let go. Um, so yeah, with that being said, let's try to get one last card on this reading. So there we go. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> I'm not even surprised that we got that card. Oh my gosh, look at that. We have the healing card. So yes, group two, you're going through a time of healing. Um, this is going to be a beautiful time of healing where you're actually like sprouting the new you and your future self is letting you know that this healing is going to bring out this new you and this new you is going to be more motivated than ever. You are going to have more self-understanding than ever before. It's going to sprout new interests for you, a brand new you that's literally birthing. It's like a brand new you that you get to kind of define and write down what it is that you want to be. Why do you want it? Because that's going to solidify that reason. It's going to make it that much more stronger for us to go in that direction and pursue that why, you know? So, ah! beautiful reading ah, group number two i hope you enjoyed it if you did again don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up hit the subscribe button down below if you want to see more videos like this in the future because i'd love to have you there sending you so much love and hopefully i see you in my next video bye all right group three i am already feeling a powerful message for you i don't know why this rose quartz is just giving me like a really powerful energy for this reading um so i'm excited to see what is underneath this group um so without further ado let's hop right into it all right, so group three, this is what we have for you. We start off with the five of wands, and we have the queen of pentacles, the two of pentacles, then we have the knight of cups, and then the queen of wands. I also pulled out three more like clarification cards because at first I was getting like a bunch of different messages from the first five cards that we had, so I pulled these uh, extra ones. And we have the temperance, the page of wands, and then the hermit. And then all of a sudden, this reading made so much more sense to me. So what we have going on here is that your future self is urging you to find more balance in your life because it seems like you've been like disciplining yourself a lot or kind of like maybe even burning yourself out sometimes or getting a little bit in your own way when it comes to wanting to maybe be productive because the queen of pentacles she she really she loves to be productive. She loves to be nurturing. She wants to do so many things. She wants to like get it all done and like kind of like she's very perfection oriented and things like that. But it might be like taking up a lot of our time because the two of pentacles signifies that we're just juggling a lot right now. And so this kind of shows that there's just been a lot going on, you know, and we've been trying to like do our best to keep it together and like do everything that we're supposed to. But it might be like kind of like draining at times, but your future self is letting you know that there's this transition period coming up for you and your future self wants you to know that like, it's gonna be important to find more balance and create more balance in your life. We don't need to be productive 24 seven. So it's like, don't get hard on yourself if you're not productive 24 seven. We're human beings, right? And a really common saying that I've been hearing a lot lately is we're human beings, not human doings, right? So like, we don't need to do, 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 do. Like that's not the point of life. The point of life is to live life, you know? And there's many different ways of living life. And you know, it's about finding that right balance about living, right? So what's fun for you? And fun can be like, um, sorry, I definitely just like spat on my counter. <laughs> um, <laughs> fun can be like going out 
to like enjoy good food at a restaurant, you know, taking like a beach picnic, taking a beach walk. I don't know. I live close to the beach. So that's like my example of like what I could be doing. But, <laughs> you know, you, there's so many things in life that you can do. You don't need to be productive 24 seven. You don't need to race to the finish line, race to the goal, right? It's kind of like when we're like climbing a mountain and let's say we're climbing like such a beautiful mountain, but we're so keen on like, I just want to get to the peak. That's all I want to do. I just want to get to the peak. And then, you know, other people are like going around, finding like these beautiful natural hot springs that are on the side of the mountain, on the side of the cliff that are overlooking the sunset. And then they're picking like yummy berries that they're finding on the way. And they're just like, oh my God, this is so great. You know, it's like, sure, we could get to our goal faster with like full force focus, da 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 da. But when we get to that goal, we're probably gonna be like, well, now I just wanna climb down the mountain and go experience life. You know, <laughs> whereas there's people that just enjoy the journey along the way and they're not like burning themselves out. Cause if we just race to the top and race to the top when we get to the top and then we, you know, want to go back down and, and experience life, we might've burnt off all of our energy. We might've burnt ourselves out and maybe we have a more pessimistic view on life because all we did was force, 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 do, do, do. Right. Whereas the people who are kind of just like picking berries along the way, enjoying this, enjoying that, they're revitalizing their energy as they get to the top, as they get to their goal, and they're enjoying that entire process. And when they get to the goal, it's that much sweeter because we're like, wow, we've, we've enjoyed that full experience rather than cutting away a big portion of our life to climb, 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 right? So instead of forcing ourselves to climb, 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 climb and waste all of our energy and then experience life, well, guess what? There's always gonna be more to experience. There's always gonna be more goals to reach. And what are we gonna do? Are we just gonna like, you know, force ourselves to like, oh, I'm gonna climb to that peak and then I'm gonna climb to that peak and then I'm gonna climb to that peak. We're gonna miss out on, out on all those berries all those hot springs, all those other things that are along the way, you know what I mean? Like we're gonna miss out on all that. So there's a huge reminder coming through from your future self that's like, hey, there's two different options here. You know, the two of pentacles, we have the two of pentacles here. We also have the temperance, which is moderation. It's also, you know, sure, yes, we can get to our goal, but then there's also something else we can add to it, right? So the temperance, look at her. We have two different ways of doing things. That's why we have the two of pentacles. There's two different options that we have. We can race to the top of the mountain or we can take our time along the way and enjoy it, right? And, but the temperance is showing like, hey, we can get to the goal and also enjoy the process. There's two different things and we don't have to have, we don't need to pick one or the other. We don't need to pick either I get to my goal or I enjoy myself. You can have both. You can get to your goal and enjoy yourself along the way. Part of you might be rushing because there might be like certain insecurities that we have. Maybe we're like, oh, if I don't do it now, then somebody else is gonna beat me to it. Or if like, if I don't do this now, then I'm not gonna be able to live the life that I want or da 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 there, There's like all these reasons that we're telling ourselves, but your future self is coming through right now and they're, and they're like, please enjoy the process. Don't just rush to the goal, you know? Like, it's the same thing of like when we find somebody that we love, for example, just, let's just use like relationships as an example. Maybe we find something that we, somebody that, that we love, right? And maybe we want to get married so bad and we're just like, oh, that's just the goal that I want to reach. Like, don't just rush and live in the future and constantly take away from the present moment, wondering when you're going to get to that goal, right? Wondering when you're going to get to having babies or like, I don't know, like whatever. I, I'm sure not everybody like wants to get married and have babies this is a random example, but like, um, <laughs> like imagine rushing to that goal and then not being in the present moment when you're having all those beautiful dates, those candlelit dinners, those like other things that you can enjoy, those other experiences that you can have. If we're constantly living in the future, constantly in anticipation, we reap the energy from the present moment and we waste it on something that doesn't even exist yet. Keep your energy in the present moment, enjoy the present moment and enjoy that journey, that process of getting there. Cause you can have both, you know, it's like, we're not going to lose sight of our goal. And that's not the point. You don't need to lose sight of your goal, but you also don't need to completely reap out and siphon out the energy from the present moment into the future. Cause when we do that, our, our mental mind is not even in the present moment. Our mental mind is completely somewhere else. 
right? And we're missing out on right here, right now. So the message from your future self is to start focusing more <laughs> on the journey and starting to love life. The Knight of Cups right here is such a beautiful card to be coming through because the Knight of Cups talks about really romanticizing and putting all of your emotions into the present moment. And you don't need to, like if you're not looking for love, it's, I'm not meaning like romanticize in necessarily that way if you're not looking for that, but like start to love yourself and right now and like put your emotions right here, right now. Like how can we make this present moment that much better? What can we do to make our current moment amazing? Instead of waiting like, like, I don't know, say you want to like redecorate your house and you're like, oh, I don't have enough money yet. Well, instead of just waiting and anticipating like, oh, I'm not gonna love my house until I do that. How can we like love our house in the present moment during the process of getting there so that we can like make the most of it? Like let's get some candles, put them around, make it cozy, make it aesthetic, make it nice. Like with what we currently have, you know? with whatever we currently have, how can we enjoy it until we get there so that we don't take energy out of the current moment, so that we don't waste the current moment, so that we don't take the next year being depressed about our house. We can still want the most amazing house, but we can still also enjoy what we currently have. You know what I mean? Like, enjoy it. Otherwise, we're gonna just waste that time. Otherwise, it's just time wasted. <laughs> so that is kind of like what we're getting here from your future self. And we also have the queen of wands. Oh, she's so inspiring. I love this card. So how can we have fun and bring enthusiasm, inspiration, creativity, and passion? You know, these two cards are very much about passion, aligning your emotions to your inspirations and like lighting the fire, like how can we light the fire in the present moment so that we can just feel so excited about what we currently have? Because I promise you, in your life right now, there's a goal that you have wanted to reach in the past that you've already attained that you used to think like, once I have that, I'm gonna feel amazing and I'm gonna feel so complete. You've already done some of those and reached some of those goals. Freaking enjoy that, you know what I mean? Like. We used to once romanticize those goals and think like, oh, once I have that, I'm literally going to feel so complete and so amazing. You do have some of those right now. So where's that feeling? You know what I mean? And what I mean by that, don't take that, don't take that in a bad way, by the way. What I mean by that is like, start to congratulate yourself and start to just enjoy them. Find enjoyment in that. It's like, wow, like look at, look at what I have done so far. Enjoy it while also having desires. You don't need to get rid of desires, but you, you need to have a balance of both, right? A balance of both rather than just constantly go, 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 achieve, 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 okay? That's why we have temperance. It's the balance. We need moderation. We need to balance both worlds and make them complementary. Look at how she's like blending them into each other. She's making both of those things complementary and blended. We can be so passionate about our future and about our desires while also being so passionate about our present moment. And when we do that, we marry both of them. And when we, when we blend both of them, look at, we bring the future into the present by doing that. That's how you siphon and bring your desires to you because all of a sudden you're in that frequency, you're in that alignment. Just as the law of attraction says, you know, when, when we're feeling a certain way, it's that good feeling emotion that then brings it to us. Like having gratitude, which is the energy of like having received something, that's the energy and frequency of receiving. Therefore, when you are that energy, you attract more of that. Therefore, you attract more receiving to you. Therefore, you're, you're attracting more things to you because you're in that energy of receiving. So let's blend both and then all of a sudden future and past are together and you'll actually start bringing in your manifestation sooner than you ever thought because you're in that frequency you're in that energy i hope that's making sense page of wands it's starting it we we can have desires while also basking in the enjoyment of everything just because we're enjoying the moment doesn't mean that we're not going to have a desires I can still have a desire to like <laughs> make myself a very fancy dinner while also enjoying the present moment right now when I don't have that dinner. You know what I mean? Like 
We can have both. You can have both. It's not one or the other. Your future self is like, please blend both because your life is gonna become so much more satisfying and you're also gonna start bringing those things to you quicker than ever when you start doing that. We also have the hermit. So this is also looking deep within yourself to find what is it that I enjoy about the present moment. Again, you've reached and attained some of those goals that you've had in the past. You have. There's certain things that you're like, oh my God, I cannot wait to have that. You've attained some of that. So whoo, let's feel good about it. Like, ee! let's enjoy it. You know what I mean? Let's illuminate the goodness in the present moment, even though we might be maybe lacking, you know, the darkness shows that maybe, maybe there's certain things that we still feel like, oh, I want to still attain that because my life is currently without it. But it doesn't mean that we can't also illuminate at the same time. Light and shadows can exist at the same time. Goodness and desire, enjoyment and desire can go hand in hand. Okay. So, <laughs> enjoy the present moment because life is going to get so much juicier rather than waiting to enjoy the next moment and then the next moment and then the next moment, okay? Both can be had at the same time. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take some more cards under here. Um, so the next few ones that we have, we have surrender, yes. <laughs> surrender to the present moment some more rather than constantly chasing constantly chasing, constantly chasing. Don't live just in the future. Surrender yourself to the present moment so that you can just make the most of the present moment. Like those of you watching this right now, like maybe go make a cup of tea, light a candle, whatever it is that makes you feel really good. Make the present moment this much more beautiful. How can you make the present moment this much more beautiful? Let's surrender to the present moment for a, for a second and let's just like have appreciation. Like take a moment with me for a second and let's start appreciating what we have. What do you have in your life that you love, that, you, that you're so happy that you have? Let's surrender to that present moment of enjoying that. You can also think about your desires and guess what? You're gonna get there, you're gonna get them because you have that ability within you, baby. You have all of that potential within you and you can actualize that and I trust in that. I know you can. I totally believe in you. But at the same time, let's look at all that you've done so far and that can also be more validation of like, hey, you're gonna get to your goal because look at how much you've done so far. Look at how much you have done literally so much okay so like give yourself <laughs> give yourself time to appreciate and surrender to the amazingness that you've already done while also having desires okay oh we also have the alchemist look at that <laughs> we can transmute energy this is all about transmutation this is a very powerful card this is realizing that you can transmute anything alchemy is mostly seen as like turning lead into gold but it goes way deeper than that but like what you currently have is already gold it has the potential to be that it's just the rearranging of certain atoms and, and perspectives so change your perspective to realize that you already are gold and we can attain more gold that's fine that's fine to have those desires but you already are that too so let's enjoy it too okay we don't have to be in a constant state of lack in order to stay attached to our desires. A lot of us think that like, oh, if I'm enjoying the present moment and I just become satisfied with the present moment, I'm not gonna desire anything anymore. Like if I just become satisfied in my relationship as it is, that means I'm not gonna want anything more. You can still want something more while enjoying the present moment, my love. You don't have to let go. It's not one or the other. Again, we can blend them. They, can, they go hand in hand and in fact, they go much better hand in hand. They go much better blended, baby. <laughs> it's kind of like when we're cooking a meal and we only put in one, one ingredient, we're like, no, it has to stay as one ingredient because if I put more in it, it's not gonna be chicken anymore. Like, or, or like whatever. I don't know why I use the example of chicken, but like, I don't know, let's say you're cooking broccoli and you're like, no, all of a sudden it's not gonna be broccoli if I don't, if I add something else. We're like, we can have broccoli and carrots and it's gonna be a little bit better. Or we can like, you know, put some, some sauces on that. We can make it like a teriyaki broccoli. It doesn't mean we have to lose the broccoli. We can, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we can have blended. And it, in fact, it's better blended. It's better to enjoy the present moment. I know I'm getting repetitive here. I know, I know, but like important messages, okay? Your future self wants to like knock this in here. So it's better blended. The, your whole message here, group number three, is like, it's better blended. So enjoy the present moment while also having desires because life is like so much better that way. Okay. Now, ooh, look at this next card. <laughs> group three, we have the card of manifest. 
Okay, this is the secret to manifestation. If you watch Law of Attraction videos on YouTube, if you've watched mine, then you know. And if not, you know, maybe go, go watch them, but I'm gonna give you a little rundown right now. So like, your vibe, whatever it is that you're feeling and thinking the most is what you're gonna begin to attract. And it mostly deals with the feeling, just so you know. Not so much the thoughts, but mostly the feeling is what kind of attracts other things. Cause that's a frequency, right? You're sending out a certain frequency and we can measure feeling. It actually has literal frequency. Everything is frequency because everything on our earth is in vibration. Therefore everything is vibration or frequency because that's what frequency is. It's vibration. It is the rate of vibration. So whatever you're vibrating at is going to amplify whatever resonates with that. When a certain frequency resonates with the other, it amplifies it. When it does not resonate with it, it actually unamplifies it. I used to be an audio engineer. So like <laughs> I could actually explain how waveforms work and like show you what that means. But Basically, it's like certain wave waveforms, if they're both pluses and they're both on this side of the spectrum, they amplify each other. But if they're like opposites, they end up canceling each other out, right? So your energy is canceling out other energy in your life so that you're not even able to recognize goodness or good pathways, things like that. If your energy is in the alignment of like feeling happy and feeling good, you're going to amplify everything else in your life that is that is that. You're going to amplify opportunities that lead you to more goodness because that's what you're amplifying rather than canceling it out. So your vibe will either amplify other frequencies, which everything is frequency by the way. So opportunities, people, conversations, objects, things, people, places, everything. It is all frequency. When you align and resonate with the frequency of what you desire, you're going to amplify the pathway to that in your life. You're going to amplify that because when you're resonating with it, you're connected to it and it's blended. You're blending yourself with it. Your future self wants you to know right now, surrender to the present moment and start loving your present moment because that is going to take you to your goal that much faster. That much faster. You're going to be like manifesting it, baby. <laughs> you're going to turn that lead into gold because again, um, it's interesting that we're all made up of the same things. You have the same like atoms as a banana, as a, you know, we're all made up of the exact same stuff. The only reason why it's taking the form of a banana versus a flower versus a human is the, there's something which it's like the energy of it that makes molecules align in certain molecular structures that create certain like, um, like, I guess like elements or compounds that turn itself into like potassium or oxygen or hydrogen or this or that. So that's what alchemy is, right? I know I'm getting kind of like scientific right now, but like that's what creates these different, these different things. We don't know why molecules align that way to create these certain compounds. It's, and that's where alchemy comes in. So the alchemists believe that it's the energy, the essence of something that causes atoms to align to create these molecular structures that create unique compounds that then create, you know, different things on our planet. But in the end of the day, it's all the same. And that's why alchemists realize, Hey, I can actually take lead, which is a very common mineral and turn it into gold, which is very valuable. So it's literally a way of like, you know, getting rich, but it's also a symbol of, of it's also a metaphor. So turning lead into gold is also a metaphor for, Hey, I can take whatever I am right now and turn myself into gold. I can, I can become anything I want. I can, take whatever it is that I have in front of me right now and make it become anything that I desire by changing the frequency of it or changing the energy of it. Because when you change the energy of it, essentially, technically, you should be able to rearrange those atoms to create different molecular compounds and completely change what it is that you have. Technically, you could also t turn a banana into gold if we knew how to change the energy of it, right? But that's kind of like besides the point. The point being is when we change our energy, we can change what we are aligning with, what we're resonating with, and then poof, manifest, bam, anything that we desire. So, <laughs> um, I hope I explained that right. I'm not like a super, super science, science person. Um, so hopefully that kind of like made sense. I hope that made sense. Anyway, with that being said, next couple of cards on this, on this reading that has turned into a scientific thing. We also have shining through. Look at that. So your future self is like, Hey, it is time to just shine your light. Enjoy yourself. Let your light shine. Don't dim it being like, Oh, it's only going to shine. Once I have this, it's only going to shine. Once I reach this, 
We've been telling ourselves that for how long? <laughs> and like, when are we gonna allow ourselves to be happy? You know what I mean? Be happy right now, you deserve it right now. You literally deserve it right now. So it's time to just like blossom. Just let yourself be, let yourself shine. Let, let yourself enjoy life. Don't be too hard on yourself feeling like, oh, I gotta reach, I gotta reach, I gotta reach. Enjoy, just enjoy. That's what you're here to do. <laughs> we also have earth magic. <laughs> I'm getting really passionate right now. I have so much energy, you guys. This reading, just like I said in the beginning of group three, I was like, I have a lot of energy for this reading. I don't know why. Here we are, this energy is just like being amplified so strong right now. Anyway, we have this earth magic card, which is a very powerful card. As you can see, this reminds me of that alchemy, by the way. Look at the energy she's just cultivating. And it's like she's pulsating and the earth is hearing her and she's connected to the earth. And it's just like this energy that's moving through, right? So this is you, this is your future self being like, you have this magic within you. And the magic within you is energy. And depending on your vibe, Again, you are going to draw certain energies to you and repel others, right? You're gonna draw certain energies to you and repel others. For you to blend your energy with the energy of what you desire, it is time to align to that frequency, baby. Look at that. Everything that you want will be drawn to you like a magnet. It's about enjoying life. You know what's interesting is we feel like we need to work so hard and like discipline, discipline, discipline. But it's so funny that we become so productive and have so much energy when we actually just start enjoying what we're doing. Like if all of a sudden we bring fun to it and we don't look at it like, oh, I have to do this. This is work. This is hard. If we just look at it like, ooh, this is fun. We get stuff done so much faster. It has like this magical element to it. Like imagine a painter that's being like super self-critical and they're like, oh, I hate what I'm drawing. I hate what I'm drawing. This is, this is so shitty. Their artwork afterwards Whatever you put in is what you get out. If you're putting in that energy towards your art, you're not gonna be satisfied with the piece that you have at the end. You're not going to like it, right? But if you come with the energy of like, I am so inspired, if you stick to that, even if you're making a mistake, like look at Bob Ross, like there's no mistakes, there's just happy accidents, right? If we start to change our perspective, change our frequency, change our energy, we are going to start having these happy accidents these little blessings, everything's gonna to start to be a blessing. And you are gonna be so happy with the outcome of everything because all of a sudden you're just in that frequency, that alignment, and it's just gonna work out. It's gonna somehow just work out because of your perspective of seeing that within it. When you recognize potential within something, even a mistake or an accident, you're gonna to start to see how it can become a blessing. Your perspective is everything. Okay. Wow. This is really becoming like a, <laughs> this is becoming, this is becoming like a self-help book. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to restart the camera really quick before it dies out. Cause it always cuts out at 30 minutes. So hang on. Okay. We are back. <laughs> the next card that we have, we have the card of Panther. Powerful card. We have, it says protection. Consider who you allow to take your energy and who you give it away to freely. This is also where you spend your energy. Are you spending your energy on negativity? Are you spending your energy on things that you don't really want to spend your energy on? Or are you spending it on things that you're like, yes. So this is about protection, protecting your energy. Like if somebody is like telling you a really negative story that you don't want to hear, like, how can we just protect our energy some more? How can we, you know, protect ourselves? It's about knowing ourselves, knowing ourselves and having proper boundaries with certain things, right? Not putting ourselves deliberately into negative situations unless we know that we have the energy to be strong enough to kind of like go through it and handle it, you know? But it's about having that respect for ourselves and knowing when we can handle it and when we don't want to, when we don't have the energy to do that. So. Yes. The next card we have ride the wave card, <laughs> ride the wave of that inspiration. Okay. When you have inspiration, that is a flow of energy, right? When we're being hard on ourselves, five of wands, when we're being very like opposing and critical, we're creating these walls, right? And the wave can't flow because we're almost standing in our own way. So parts of yourself have been standing in your own way. So it's time to just let the inspiration flow, go with the flow of it, ride the wave. Your future self wants you to start riding the wave more. 
which is going with the flow, going with the flow of what inspires you, going with the flow of that happiness. I recommend starting every day, like meditating and focusing and bringing up that energy of what you want to feel. I have certain meditations on YouTube that can totally help with that, by the way. But like, if you start off your day by like getting into the right energy, the right frequency, you are going to completely change your trajectory, your energy entirely. You're going to get on that wave and then you can just ride it. And then anytime you accidentally stand in your own way, just be like, okay, you know, I'm just gonna move out of my own way and continue riding the wave. Continue riding the wave. Okay. Oh, we also have the card of solitude coming in. So this is reminding me of meditation, which is exactly what we were just talking about. So this is reminding me of like taking some time to yourself to like, you know, enjoy your own energy, meditate on the energy that you want to have and not constantly be bombarded by other people. Like it's time for us to like create our own energy rather than always kind of just reciprocating and being like a mirror to other people. Cause a lot of times when we're around other people a lot, we become like them, like them and we end up mirroring, mirroring that. Um, so if you want to become your own energy and make your own energy so that you can resonate with what you want and align to the energy that you desire to feel every day. If you desire to feel inspired and happy and magical and all that kind of jazz, take some time for yourself to kind of like not necessarily be around other people 24 seven and, you know, meditate, get into your own energy. Ask yourself, what is it that I want to feel? And meditation can really help. And again, guided meditations mostly really help us focus our energy on what it is that we desire to feel. Um, I actually have a video. This is inspiring me to make a video actually uh, specifically about manifestation and how to get into the right energy. Maybe I'm going to film that after this because this pile is like giving me all the inspi inspiring energy. Anyway, um, taking some time for yourself to get into the right energy so that you can ride that wave. We also have dry desert. So when we're feeling off, you know, there might be times that we're feeling off. We can get into the right mindset by just like taking a step back and focusing our energy again into the right place. And again, riding the wave of like, enjoy life like this is enjoying life this is not this is not drying yourself out by standing in your own way being like i need to force out productivity when we're feeling dry right because maybe we've like drained our cup at certain times you know maybe we're really trying to do something but maybe at times you know we're a little bit more drained we're not feeling it and um we can't force it. It's almost like forcing a car to go when the tank is empty. You know what I mean? It's not going to happen. So don't force yourself, force yourself, force yourself. It's not time to be hard on yourself. Life is about enjoying it. Life is about riding the wave. You know, like dolphins are not like humans, right? Dolphins, for example, do whatever they want. Of course they need to survive. You know, we have like natural human needs, but at the same time, they're not like Oh, I need to like do this every day. I need to do that. Dolphins are really playful creatures and naturally humans are supposed to be as well, but we've kind of lost that within the new, like sort of like, I don't know, <laughs> revolutions that humans have been having that have kind of like taken away our lust for life and the, and the kind of fun for life. You know, all of us now are like, oh, we need to be as productive as possible, make enough money. So we have enough in our 401k and like this and that, like none of that makes sense. That's just like all human kind of garbage at the end of the day. Yes, it does have purpose and it helps us out in certain ways. But at the same time, we're natural creatures that came to this earth just to experience. And other animals have like these playful times, these playful moments when they're out in nature. Of course, like when they see a human, they're kind of scared, they run away, whatever. But dolphins, for example, aren't really scared of humans and you can actually see how playful they are. You're supposed to be a playful creature. Enjoy life more. And when you're feeling dry, when you're feeling like a dry desert, take some time. Like, to recuperate, take some time to rejuvenate your energy so that you can create that water again so you can ride that wave again, right? Take time to like build up your emotions and your, your energy level instead of force, 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 right? Um, so yeah, with that being said, I know this is becoming a long reading right now, but there's just so much that I wanted to say in this one. Um, we're gonna go ahead and shuffle some more cards here to just get some more info on this reading. So any other messages for group three? Messages from group three's future self. All right, let's see. <laughs> yes. 
look at angel number 22, which is all about connecting to what we deserve, what we desire. I'm also seeing this 13 and 31 and this one here. So it's one, three, one, three, one, which is really interesting. Um, and we have uh, 22. So there's a lot of like, uh, good energy here about creating a new foundation, a new beginning, celebration, because threes are all about celebration and enjoyment. Threes, all about enjoyment. And then 22 is connecting to the path that you really want to connect to, being blessed, enjoying your blessings, live a blessed life. Don't live a, a life of like hard work and hard work and hard work. And then we also have the fates. Look at, she's connecting to her passions, her desires. These stars represent um, sort of like hope, blessings, fate. We're, we're, we're fated for a blessed destiny. It's time for us to own that, grab hold of that. Realize that you're not fated. You weren't born here to work, my love. You weren't fated to like, you, you were fated to do whatever your soul is the most passionate about. And if that means like going to the beach and running along the beach and like laughing and like do playful, things do it do it okay so um yeah and the more that you align to that because like I, for some reason i could hear some of you saying right now like i don't have the money to do that i need to work to do that so i need to work 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 wrong mindset i heard some of you saying that and maybe not all of you are thinking that way but some of you are definitely thinking that way right now and like one thing i have to say is again aligning to the right frequency because when you align to the right frequency, you draw in those circumstances to you that bring you to that. So when you start to take time for yourself, even if you can't afford to go to the beach right now, you can't afford a vacation, you feel like you need to work, 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 do something that makes you really enjoy the present moment even that much more. Go light a candle, make some tea, whatever you gotta do to make yourself start to feel good. Meditate to get into the right frequency, my love. Meditate, write down exactly what it is that you wanna feel. Let's meditate on it. I have some free meditations here on YouTube that are very powerful for like changing your energy. I'll probably even be making a video very soon about like more in depth about how to change your energy even when you're not feeling it. And this is going to be the most powerful thing because your energy again resonates with certain things and it's gonna turn lead into gold. Not like literally, but metaphorically. It is going to start changing your energy so that you become and align to, to the new pathway. Temperance is about aligning to a new pathway. This is gonna be a pathway of abundance. You're gonna start bringing in the circumstances and all of the means that bring you to your goal because when we work, 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 that is not the energy that brings us abundance. The energy that brings us abundance is aligning to abundance energy, which is the good feeling energy of enjoyment, okay? So uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> let's get deeper into this. So group three, any other messages for my lovely group threes? Emotions are running. <laughs> I was feeling lots of intense energy in this reading. Emotions are running high. Yes, they are. And it's also about amplifying your emotions right now. The super moon. So amplify the good feeling emotion. Oh, and look at that. Look at that. Here's confirmation for those of you right now that are like, I need to work to make money. Prosperity lies ahead. And it lies ahead and your future self is coming through right now to be like, hey, prosperity lies ahead with you aligning to the good, good energy, the good frequency. Let's meditate on it. Let's create that energy because that is going to be what changes your entire world because that is the energy that creates worlds. It is the creative energy. When we are dry, our tank is not taking us anywhere no matter how hard we're working. No matter how hard we step on the gas pedal, when our tank is empty, it's not going to take us anywhere. Okay, let's get one last card on this reading. I know this has been a really long one, but let's get one last card here. Group three, one last piece of information. New beginnings, butterfly angel number 44, creating a new foundation for yourself, a new foundation that brings you luck and blessings because that equals an eight together. And that also signifies abundance that lasts um, generations, by the way. So there's a lot of good things to be realized and to be actualized in your life group number three. You have so much goodness coming for you. Um, and your higher self is like, the secret is just in enjoying your life the best that you can. Even if, it, even if it's just small little steps right now, maybe we can't like go to Bora Bora tomorrow, you know, maybe we don't have the funds for that. But what can we do right now to start aligning ourselves to a better and better frequency every day? Because the more you do that, the more it compounds over time and becomes exponential. So every day when you start doing that, 
it gets more and more, it amplifies more and more, and it becomes faster and faster and faster because you're gaining momentum. It is going to start gaining momentum, and it's going to start coming in faster and faster the more that you do it, the more that you align to it. You're going to start getting bigger and bigger amplifications of this energy and of the blessings that are coming your way, and you're going to get blessings, my love. You are fated to get blessings. It is about following this energy. So... Oh, I know that was a lot. Last thing I want to say is you chose rose quartz. I've been talking about the crystals lately in the reading and the energies that they um, give off. So since you chose rose quartz, rose quartz is all about self-love. So um, in romanticizing your life as well. So start to romanticize your life in a, in, not in a, in a delusional way, but I mean, start to enjoy your life. Start to light candles, make tea, start to enjoy yourself, you know, start to love yourself and realize that you have so much potential you can do anything, my love. So that is the last thing that I wanted to say before ending this reading. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button down below if you want to see more videos like this in the future because I would love to have you there. Sending you so much love and hopefully I see you in my next one. Bye. All right, so group number four, if you chose this pile, then this is going to be a reading. So let's hop right into it. All right, so group number four, here's what we have for you. We have the death card. We have the uh, king of pentacles, justice, six of wands, and then the ten of pentacles right here. So what your future self wants you to know is you're about to go through a big transformation. And this transformation is about you starting to really own who you are and to like let your authenticity excuse me, shine. Wow. <laughs> Somebody told me that like whenever uh, you burp in a reading, it's like confirmation of truth. <laughs> so we're just going to, we're just going to take it like that. We're just going to roll with it. So <laughs> yeah. So I kind of like, yeah, anyway, some air stuck in there. Anyway, <laughs> your higher self is letting you know that you're about to align to who you really are and start to really own who you are and have this confidence in who you are. This is letting your authenticity shine because it's kind of been like hidden because the death card is very connected to Scorpio energy and Scorpio is kind of when something's like, it, it, it rules the underworld, right? And so it's kind of like when something, we've kept something below the surface. We've kept our authenticity and our truth maybe below the surface. It's been hidden. We've, maybe we've been wearing false masks, except the death card also represents that all of a sudden we're breaking out of that shell, kind of like a butterfly when it goes into its cocoon. There's part of, parts of ourselves that we've kept in a cocoon that we haven't wanted to, wanted to be fully authentic with, that maybe we haven't wanted to be fully open with. But there's a massive shift coming for you. And I feel like you've been feeling it lately because part of you wants to like break out of it. Part of you wants to break out of that cocoon. Part of you wants to sprout from underneath the earth and to actually like let yourself shine. Like your inner soul really wants that. But we've had a hard shell, right? We've had like these different masks that we've worn and, and um, we're really, I think you have been lately having this desire, like I really just wish that I could be fully open and honest and truthful and I wish I could own that, but you know, sometimes it's hard obviously, um, but this is like part of the process of life. Your higher self wants you to know that once you break out of this cocoon, your wings are going to literally open. You are going to begin to fly. I don't even think you realize that you have wings, okay? Group number four, your higher self is coming through being like, I don't even think you realize that you have wings. Like, <laughs> but you do, but you've just been in this cocoon for so long that you don't realize who you really are. Literally group four, you don't even realize who you really are and your future self, is the self that's already broken out of that cocoon and they're coming through right now as this beautiful butterfly, moth, whatever, you know, we have a butterfly and a moth here. It's coming back as that and being like, hey, I'm living my best life. I am flying around. I am feeling completely open and free. This liberty, which is interesting because uh, liberation and, and liberty is connected to the justice card. And that's where we get the word Libra from. And that's why Libra is connected to the scales and justice all that. Um, anyway, uh, basically this is like you realizing who you really are. You're about to go through this huge transformation of realizing who you really are. And the King of Pentacles is somebody who is so solid in who they are. They're so confident, grounded, and so sure of themselves. There's this surety that's going to start coming through once you break out of your shell. Literally, once you break out of this cocoon, you are going to be stronger than ever. Your authenticity is going to start to shine through because once you start to just own who you are and you're like, you know what? I don't care anymore. Because also a big, a big thing, when we have certain friends 
or even family members or whoever that maybe we've been wearing a mask with. Maybe we haven't been fully ourselves, fully honest. You know, maybe we say yes to things when we don't really want to. Maybe we hide certain aspects of ourselves that really want to come out. Maybe we hide our honesty and our truth um, out of being scared or whatever. When we do that, people don't even really know who we really are. So when we have friends and family members, these people don't even know who we really are. So it's like, what are we really losing? Like, say we say we decide to be really authentic. Say we decide to be really open and, and actually share our real selves, our authentic selves, which we don't need to do it in a negative way. We can do it in a positive way. Even if there's like negative things on our mind, there's still healthy ways of expressing that and loving ways of expressing that. So let's say we do that and let's say we piss people off by being our real selves and they're like, oh, I don't like you anymore because you're, you're different. At least we'll get to know who our real friends are because at least we can be ourselves and then see who still loves us for ourselves, see who still like is accepting of us. And this way we can, this will actually dim away anxiety too. Cause sometimes when we have anxiety, it can be because we're also sometimes wearing a false mask that we have to kind of like keep up with. And we know deep down inside, even if it's something like innocent, you know what I mean? Like even if we're wearing a slight false, false mask and we just like dishonor ourselves by not being fully honest and like saying yes when we don't mean yes or like other things like that, we're dishonoring ourselves. And it can give us anxiety because then we have to own up to pretending like we're somebody we're not. We have to pretend like we're the somebody who's gung-ho on yes when we're not on yes. We have to pretend that we're gung-ho on this when we're not actually that, you know what I mean? It, and it festers anxiety because we're keeping up with a false identity. We're keeping up with a mask, right? Um, no matter how big or small it is, it kind of creates this anxiety and it builds up over time. So if we've been nervous and we have this, this tendency to be over anxious and things like that, it can actually stem because maybe we're, we're dishonoring ourselves and not allowing our authenticity to shine. Your higher self and your future self is coming through right now being like, breaking out of that shell was the best thing I ever did. So let's do it because you give yourself the freedom to really be you. And in that freedom, you realize like, hey, I have wings. I could have been flying this whole time. I could have been making real connections with people who honor who I am, right? With people who actually understand me because we think that people might understand us, but maybe they don't because we haven't shown them who we really are. You know what I mean? So there's huge transformation that is about to come for you and your, and your future self is coming through being like, this was the best thing I could have ever done for myself. And the, the death card is sometimes, sometimes it can be a hard transition, you know, breaking out of that cocoon just as butterflies, they usually really struggle actually to break out of their cocoon. But if you help them, if it was easy, all of a sudden they wouldn't actually um, build up the muscle because the cocoon is actually nature's way of designing the perfect structure for the butterfly because the butterfly now, has to use its muscles and build its muscles. It's like a whole workout for the butterfly to escape the cocoon. And they're building up their muscles because it's a huge workout. If they did not build up those muscles and say you help the butterfly out of its cocoon, it won't be strong enough to fly. It won't have the strength to use those wings because the wings, you need big muscles to like use wings. You know what I mean? Like that's, <laughs> you need it to be strong to carry your own body weight and to flap those wings and all that. So, it would actually be a disservice to make it easy. This, this is why it's like been a struggle because it's actually gonna be the best thing that's ever happened to you. This is gonna give you the strength to be yourself. This is going to give you the strength to fly. You know what I mean? And I mean that metaphorically, obviously. <laughs> like, This is gonna give you that strength. This is the universe's way of building you up into who you're supposed to be. Of course the butterfly wishes it was easy to get out of the cocoon. Of course it was like, dang nature, this sucks. But then once they get out, you know, they might not realize that the cocoon is perfectly designed so that they can fly. The butterfly doesn't probably realize that, but it knows like, I'm going to die if I stay in the cocoon. Like, it's not right for me. I need to get out. I need to get out. I need to get out that, that instinct. And I feel like you have been having that instinct lately of like, I need to break out of this. I need to, I need to honor myself. My, my real self wants to come out so bad. So this is time to come out of your shell. This is time to come out, baby number four. It's time to start being yourself and honoring yourself, honoring your authenticity. And your higher self is telling you right now is the best thing that they ever did. Justice is something that's so, it's such a strong, powerful card. And it's all about truth, honesty, integrity, liberty, like 
this liberation of yourself so that you can be a sovereign being and you don't need to hold up to anybody else's standards. You don't need to like, the King of Pentacles, he doesn't hold up to anybody's standards. He knows who he is and he has such a strong foundation of who he is. Like he's defined himself because he knows himself and he's had all this self-reflection and time to build up his strength. The King of Pentacles is the strongest king, technically, in all of tarot um, because the Pentacles are the most physical of the tarot. Whereas like King of of cups is very strong emotionally. You know, King of Wands is strong within his passions and his desires, and King of Swords is strong mentally. King of Pentacles is like strong, like everywhere. <laughs> it's the manifestation of all of those things. So this is when we become very strong mentally, emotionally, within our stability, within our physicality, with, within everything, within our emotions. Everything becomes strong here. So you're going through a huge transformation of becoming incredibly powerful, incredibly strong in knowing who you are. Like your ability to like go after things after this is going to be incredible. You're gonna be able to almost do anything that you could put your mind to. The King of Pentacles, he knows how to get what he wants, but he knows he does it with authenticity, integrity, um, and with a sure foundation of knowing who he is. And he doesn't say yes to things that he doesn't wanna do, that's for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, and then we have the six of wands. This is actually going to end up being how you become successful group four. So even if you're successful right now, no matter where you are, right, this is going to unlock way more success for you. The six of wands is when we become admired. Other people are looking up to us. Other people might really re start respecting you on a whole new level. Once you start really owning who you are and knowing who you are, like you're gonna go through some major transformations here and it might not be easy at first. In fact, it's not gonna be easy at first. You know, it's, it's hard to like, you know, break out of your shell, but oh my gosh, is it ever gonna be worth it? The amount of respect that you are going to start getting from people, the six of wands indicates that people are really looking up to us, cheering us on, they're so proud of us. There's so much respect in that card and so much admiration and recognition. Um, and that's when we feel on top of our game. That's when our confidence is boosted. And it's also um, a card that symbolizes that we're reaching a, a large milestone that we've been wanting to reach for so long. So there's something here that's gonna allow you to reach a big milestone once we start accepting our authenticity and just like breaking out of our old shell. Ten of Pentacles right here um, symbolizes getting a, a huge blessing, like getting what you want one of the best cards in tarot, and it's been coming up a lot lately in, in readings lately, but it is one of the best cards in tarot um, because it symbolizes getting everything that you've been wanting. We are emotionally fulfilled, physically fulfilled, materially fulfilled, um, emotionally, mentally, and within our desires, within our passions. We've kind of attained like our full foundation. So I think you're gonna reach so much success and abundance. The Ten of Pentacles is also abundance and it's usually associated with generational wealth. So this is wealth for generations. Abundance for generations, feeling like we can actually do anything and, and attain like a whole new level of being. So this is about allowing yourself to be you. No more like criticism, no more putting yourself back into a hole, no more putting yourself back into that shell and that cocoon. Like. No, butterflies aren't supposed to stay there. They're supposed to break out of that and become exactly who they're meant to be. It's time to break out of the shell, okay? Because it is going to bring you more abundance, more happiness than you could ever imagine for yourself, okay? So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get into our next few cards here. So let's see. We oh. We have the card of love. Also, let me turn my camera brightness down. It is getting bright in here. So we have, look at this is following your heart passions. This is when your heart is lit up. This is when you're following what you love and you're finally honoring your heart. Going for what you really want. This is going to be so transformative. Your heart, you're going to set your heart on fire in the best way possible. I think your heart is finally going to start singing because it is no longer cocooned and bottled up and caged up. It is gonna start singing. It is gonna start feeling so alive, expressive, passionate. This is your passions being ignited. Then we also, ooh, we have the card of, look at the shell. Oh, it's so fitting for you. So 
the shell obviously resembles the shell that we're currently in that we need to break out of. So this is also like the chicken breaking out of the egg. Of course, it's a hard process. All of a sudden, it's a whole new world out there. We're like, oh my God, it was so much more comfortable in the egg. We're gonna have to learn so much. There's so much out there. There's so many, ah! But it's also lighting your heart on fire because it's opening up opportunity because how much are you able to do within the egg? Not much, you've been limiting yourself. You putting yourself in a box and keeping yourself in a shell and hiding your authenticity, you've been putting yourself in a shell. How much can a chicken do within a shell? Not much. It cannot grow. It cannot get food. It cannot make abundance for itself. It cannot experience love. It can't do anything in the shell. So what's the point of even staying there? In order to not walk on people's toes, in order to not disappoint people, in order to not hurt people, in order to not like, you know, that's what we're, well, that's what we're gonna sacrifice. We're gonna sacrifice all of our happiness, all of our potentiality. Because we're scared of like stepping on somebody's toes. Like everyone's happiness is up to them. Let me just give like, here's a little word of gem advice. <laughs> Which you probably already know. I'm sure you guys are like, yeah, but we're just gonna say it anyway. Um, everybody's responsible for their own happiness. You are not responsible for other people's happiness. If they're disappointed in what you think, if they're disappointed in what you say, that's their problem. That's not you. And, and also like, of course we have to take accountability with some things. We can't just walk around like being mean or anything like that. But like, sure, we need accountability for some things, but at the same time, us honoring ourselves, our authenticity. That is very, very, very valuable. In fact, more valuable. But we can do that in a loving way. And that also allows us the freedom of being able to be open and authentic and do it in a loving way. And if somebody has a problem with that, then that's their problem. You know what I mean? It's not you, you're not responsible for that. You're responsible for your own happiness. You're also responsible, you know, doing things in a, in a loving, kind manner and doing it to the best of your ability and, and doing your best. But you, we're not supposed to lie, be inauthentic and keep ourselves boxed up in a shell, not living. You came to this life to live your life. You're not here to live anybody else's life or anybody else's scenario or, you know, lie to, like, well, we're not here for that. We're here to be ourselves and like go after our passions. Your heart has a unique, you have a unique heart for a reason. You, you were born here with a unique heart for a reason. You were born here with certain desires for a reason. And it's because your soul wants to go after that. Your soul wants to seek that out. Nobody should, should stop you from that. Right? And then we, ooh, we also have the card of play. So life is supposed to be about having fun. It's so interesting because in the last group, they also had dolphins that were kind of like symbolizing a playful energy and about going with the flow. And it's so interesting that in this group, we also have two dolphins and they're symbolizing play. So this is about us going after what makes our heart sing, what makes us have fun, not living up to like other people and like what they think is fun and the constantly, you know, of course it's very, nice to you know be kind to people and like once in a while once in a while we can compromise uh, and you know maybe do like what our partner wants and then they can compromise and do what we want sometimes but at the same time like we don't need to be inauthentic either we could be like hey i know you love this so i'm gonna like be here and show up for you but we don't need to do that all the time you know we, we can we can be authentic we can be honest we don't have to pretend right we don't have to pretend so yes following our heart, following what feels good. You know, maybe we're gonna wanna do something for somebody that's not our favorite cup of tea, but we wanna do it because it's for them, but we're not being inauthentic in the process. You know what I mean? So like there's different ways of navigating things to make it more realistic to where we, again, stick to our ground and, and we can be authentic and real. So yeah, with that being said, the next two cards, we have the royal you. Look it. So this is about you attracting abundance, prosperity, seeing your value. This is you recognizing and seeing your value. You have value, King of Pentacles. This is you realizing that you are completely worthy and valuable. You are equal to everybody else on this planet, my love. Okay? You are equal to the people that you look up to. You are equal to those who you don't look up to. We're all equal. You are worthy. You are so worthy, you have so much value. So this is you realizing it and your future self right now is like, hey, 
realize that you are that, you are valuable. Enjoy life more, just start to enjoy life, be authentic. Ooh, and then we have the roses kiss. This is such a cute card. This one like rarely comes up in readings. Um, and wow, this is about accepting love and accepting what your heart loves. Accepting what your heart loves. The ladybug indicates love too. It can indicate romance as well. Uh, so what do we really love? This is also us being able to feel like we can express ourselves more, express our real feelings. This is going to make you so successful. Again, 10 of pentacles, six of wands. This is actually gonna bring you to a big goal that you have. This is somehow bringing you to a big goal. The next, ooh, we have the owl next. I love the owl. owl owls are probably my favorite animal. Anyway, besides the point. It um, says sight, detach your emotions from situations that you cannot control. We don't need to carry that emotional burden of something that we cannot control anyway. We don't need to do that. We can keep our sight set on what we want. Owls also represent wisdom as well. So this is about us gaining the wisdom of life and about authenticity and about what's proper and what we should really be doing. And I think you know deep down inside, like it's really important to be authentic. Yes, it's one of the hardest things to do as well, but it is like so valuable and so important. And I think you are a very intelligent person, a very intelligent person. You're also very emotionally intelligent. The fact that you already, you know, feel things so deeply. Like I'm getting the fact that you guys are probably em empaths who chose this pile and that's why you have a hard time being authentic because you don't wanna hurt people because you can feel, you can feel it. It's almost as if you're hurting yourself. So like you're very emotionally intelligent and intelligent in many ways, but it's also time to start honoring yourself, okay? You don't have to say goodbye to the emotional intelligence. You just need to start honoring yourself in the process. Um, regardless of how much it hurts because I'm sure that you already realize within yourself like you'd rather somebody be fully honest with you rather than lie to you even if it hurts. I'm sure that you listening to this you're like yeah of course I would rather that. So let's start being that. Let's start honoring that. Ooh, we also have the card here of metamorphosis which is so funny because this is the exact card as the death card in this oracle deck. It's the same thing. And look at these butterflies that we have. This is so interesting. Um, so yes, you're going through a massive change. The death card in tarot just means metamorphosis. That's what it means. Cause it's the death of our old self. It's the death of being a caterpillar and becoming a butterfly. You know what I mean? So you're going through a huge shift, a huge change group four, massive metamorphosis. Becoming the real you. We also have sad embrace. So there's, there's maybe parts of ourselves that we're going to be letting, letting go of. And I think that part of ourselves has been anxious or sad, but it's because we've been not ourselves. This is about being authentic. Also allowing yourself to be, to show your emotions, to speak your emotions, to be authentic. It's all part of the human experience. We also have wishing well. Ooh, this is about a wish getting granted. Okay, whenever this card comes up in a reading, pause the video for a sec if you need to, to think about what it is that you wanna wish for because this card coming up in a reading is like, hey, make a wish right now because it's gonna come true. So what are you wishing for right now, group four? What are you wishing for? What do you want? Because this is about a wish being granted, okay? So make, I'm literally gonna put this card front and center because that's, what we, that's just what we need right now. We need that card to be front and center. This is about getting a wish. And it's so interesting because we had the Ten of Pentacles and also the Six of Wands. So I was like, I see, I see you being really successful in something and like attaining something that you really desire. Make a wish right now. Okay, maybe you already did. Maybe you already paused the video into that. But like, yes, claim that wish. Write it down. Sometimes writing it down is like really powerful or just like really know it. Maybe you already really resonate with it. Really know it. Make that wish, okay? Because like, this is the card of making a wish and it blossoming <laughs> in new ways, maybe even unexpected ways. So yes, with that being said, let's go ahead and shuffle this deck to get some more info on this group. These have been long readings today, but we've been loving it. Um, we have the observer. So this can be about seeing into more of your future, observing kind of like 
you know, who you want to be, seeing who you want to be in order to bring that into the now. Also, really, this is really sticking out to me. The fact that we have 48 and 49 is really interesting. These are two different decks in this like consecutive number, one after the other. That's really sticking out to me. So it's like there's the next step. The next step is to like observe what you want. Ooh, making a wish and observing it beginning to culminate and manifest and seeing. You're going to start to see this path unfold in front of you about how to get to your desire. Ooh, I'm loving that. All right, let's see. Time to go. It's, yeah, it's time to leave behind the old. Time to leave behind the old. We also have two 45s, which is interesting, which equal a nine, which is closing of an old phase, closing of an old chapter. So it's time, it's time to go. <laughs> it's time to leave the old life behind, my loves. It is time to go. It's also, you know what I'm hearing in this card, which is really funny? Being authentic to yourself when you don't have time for something. Being real with others and yourself when you don't have time. And also, for example, like say you're like at a party or hanging out with somebody and you're like, oh, I don't know how to say goodbye or I don't know how to say it. Like maybe we always wait for other people to say that because we find it awkward. Honor yourself. When you got to go, you got to go. When you're not feeling it and you want to do something else, time to honor yourself some more. And you'll begin to learn and navigate like how to, it, you'll become better and better at it. You're going to learn how to navigate that more properly um, in the future. But like, it's about honoring your time. When you don't have time for something, don't say yes. <laughs> don't say yes. Even if like, you know, maybe we're not necessarily busy or have other obligations, but if we're not feeling something, we're like, hey, I don't have time because I really need, need time for myself that day. Like that's like a day that I just want to like chill at home. Be authentic with yourself, like, and with others, okay? Also really feeling like this card. Work through your fears. The new moon in Scorpio. What was I saying about Scorpio in the beginning? I was talking about how death is connected to Scorpio. We have the new moon in Scorpio. Work through your fears. We have to get past our fears on this. Let's see, let's get another card here. The energy is gaining momentum. So you're gaining the momentum to start going in this new direction. The waxing moon, it is growing that comes after a new moon when we start growing towards our new intention, our new desire, our new wish. And we're gonna end off this reading with one last card. So let's see, what do we get here? I'm really feeling that one. This is bringing you to abundance. This is bringing you, you might fear losing certain things in your life by being authentic, but your, your future self right now, your higher self, your future self is coming through and they're like, no, actually this is going to bring you more abundance than you ever had. You're not losing anything. And sure, you might lose certain things that don't resonate, that weren't meant to be with you anyway. Because if, if you're being yourself and things don't resonate with that and they fall out of your life, they weren't meant to be in your life anyway. You know, we're not meant to like people please, right? So you're going to end up making more, doing more, becoming more by being your authentic self. Don't hide into perfectionism or feel like, oh, I need to filter myself or I need to like, no. You being your authentic self is going to bring you towards more prosperity, more abundance. Even if that doesn't make sense right now, it's bringing you there. So that is what we have for you, my beautiful pile number fours. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it made sense for you. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a thumbs up because it does help out the channel. Um, hit the subscribe button down below if you want to see more videos like this in the future because I'd love to have you there. Sending you all of my love and hopefully I see you in my next one. Bye!